Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Make sure and like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. It really does help us out. It's a great way to kind of give back. Um, we're trying to put out as much information as we can. And just really, guys, I enjoy doing the videos. It's just something kind of fun about it. So um, what I want to talk about today is the bolt bags, inch bags, get home bags, bug out bags, bug in bags, uh, bail out bags, what, speed balls, whatever else you want to throw on there. We're talking about bags a little bit today. And so let's dive into this. Okay, so the glowing issue that we run into with bags is that most bags that you see built, so all these guys that are just, they, they, they come up with loads and loads and loads and loads of gear. And, uh, you know, I, there are certain channels, and you all know who I'm talking about without saying names, where it's everything is a what if, what if, what if. I mean, my God, you could what if things to death. What if, what if, what if stormtroopers came down our road right now and started attacking our house? You know, it, it's, it, there, there's, it's impossible to be prepared for every scenario. So stop with this stupid, ridiculous what ifs and build something and build these bags that actually make sense. Look at the worst case scenario, right? Your most likely course of action and the most dangerous course of action and plan for those. So if you live in a condo, in the middle of a uh, busy metropolitan area, sure, probably a good idea to have an, a location to bail out to. If you're like us and you live on a small hobby farm, why would I leave here short of a natural disaster, poison in the air, or you know, hurricane, something like that, something like you know, Katrina that might actually cause me to leave? Why would I leave? Um, there's very little reason. So localized disaster at that point in time, it's very easy to plan on it. You don't necessarily have to have a bug out location so much as you just have to have a place to go where you've set aside a little bit of food, water, uh, some clothing. I guess you can call that a bug out location. When I think of a bug out location, I think of you know people building a bunker in the mountains. But uh, really what I'm talking about is put together a case. It's pretty simple to get a, a Pelican case or even those tough boxes from Home Depot and uh, put some stuff in it. Throw it at your in-laws house. Give it to your parents. Throw it up in the attic of your brother-in-law. Whatever it is that you need to do so that you have a place to go in the event that a fire happens in your house. Make copies of all spare documents. Throw them in there or of all documents that you need. Throw them in that box. It's an easy thing to fix. So, um, that's your that's your bug out plan, right? Otherwise, you should be kind of looking at bugging in. Bugging in, as a general rule, makes a lot more sense. I realize there's exceptions. Now we talk about vehicles, and people build these bolt bags for their vehicles, right? And then in their bolt bags, they take these massive backpacks, and they put all this crap in there. And here's the thing. That bolt bag is supposed to get you from your car to your house. That's it. It's not going anywhere else. So uh, where we're looking at is most likely course of action is going to break down on our way to work or on our way home. And uh, we're probably going to be able to call a tow truck. But the most dangerous course of action is that, you know, whatever EMP hits, that something uh, EM EMP hits or uh, just a localized natural disaster, something along the lines of a bad storm uh, could cause us to have to walk home. Okay, And so we build a bag so that it has everything in there just in case we're caught kind of with our pants down, so to speak. So um, I, you know, I live 15 miles from the gym. If I want to drive to the gym, I don't generally have all my EDC stuff on me. So the bolt bag in the vehicle is built kind of for that because the only thing that I'm taking with me is a pistol and my wallet. Everything else tends to stay at home when I do that. So I need spare flashlights, spare batteries, spare, spare, spare knife, stuff like that in that bolt bag for those occasions. On a daily basis, I have my ERC bag, okay, or my, I'm sorry, my EDC bag. So EDC is the bag that I use, ERC, I'm sorry, somebody called right at the same time and the abbreviation on their name was ERC, so it, it, <laughs> EDC, okay, so EDC bag, everyday carry, right, um, we call this a bolt bag, this is what we call a bolt bag in the army, um, this is things that I will probably end up needing throughout my day, all right, so <clears throat> this bag that I have here, this is a uh, Victos uh, Perimeter 25 bag. I like this one, guys, because it's lightweight. I like lightweight bags. Heavy bags you tend to not use. Uh, what ends up happening if you have an EDC bag that's a heavy bag, it stays in your house uh, or it stays in your car. It doesn't actually get carried into the meetings and stuff like that the way that it's supposed to. Uh, so the uh, ha having a, 
a, a lightweight everyday carry pack to me is uh, it's kind of a godsend. Um, I do, you know, I have tablets for business. I have computers for business. I do a lot of presentations, a lot of classes around the area. Um, and so I have this set up for a lot of that stuff, but it's also there for an emergency. And so I need to be able to get myself home. I need to be able to uh, get to wherever my kids are or whatever it is, whatever's going on. Uh, I need to be able to address some situations. Now, again, the most likely situation is a uh, you know, car accident on my way to work and I'm going to end up using the medical kit that's in my car. So I, I have redundancy in this in that there's other bags in my vehicle, but this is the one that I carry around. So for those of you that are going to panic about not having everything in here, that's okay. We can agree to disagree. That's perfectly fine. But I have enough in here because if I start putting too much stuff in here, the bag gets too heavy. It's just not worth carrying around anymore. And so we tend to leave it. So here in this front pocket, I actually don't have anything. This is a spare document holster. I put things in, you know, passport or whatever when I'm traveling. So uh, on a general daily basis, I don't carry anything in there. Now <clears throat> here on the front of it, you can see we have this this kind of specialized pocket here. This allows you to put a pistol in there. If you put a pistol in there, uh, the book I'm reading right now is The Prince, if you've never read that. Um, but uh, whatever book you're, you're going through, um, I always put that there in the front. And then from here, it's actually fairly simple. What we have in here is this is the bulk of our bag, right? This is the uh, the kind of the, the cool the cool guy stuff. I do carry a spare Leatherman, even though I have a Leatherman on me every day. Again, this bag goes with me if I go to the gym. And a lot of times when I go to the gym, the only thing in my pocket is a wallet and my pistol. So um, this bag is the uh, uh, kind of equivalent of uh, everyday carry that would be on my person. So even though I have a knife on my person and a flashlight on my person, I do carry extra in here uh, for that reason and I use them quite a bit too because I you know you go to the gym and you get a flat tire being able to have a flashlight is pretty handy um, and that's happened to me um, I do keep a tourniquet in here just a ready access tourniquet so uh, again it's one of those things that hopefully never gets used but it's there if I need it um, spare magazine for my everyday carry pistol I do carry a compass in here uh, this is been a, this was a backpacking compass that I used a, a lot backpacking and hunting, uh, and I've used this since I was a kid. So this one just <laughs> mostly has sentimental value because it's been to every continent with me. Um, but uh, this uh, this compass, just having a general direction uh, and being able to find general directions when you're when you're lost is uh, certainly a, a benefit. Uh, 550 cord. I keep a roll of 550 cord in here. Um, I use this. A decent amount but as a general rule this one here kind of is the emergency one because I don't untangle this one so usually when I want to use 550 cord uh, I have a big roll in my shop and I'll go grab that but uh, being able to have some while you're traveling and things like that this is probably one of those things that you could deal without guys or you could braid one I braid the little zipper handles that I had on some of my other bags is I cut the uh, the zippers off and I braided little handles out of the 550 cord and I use that as a zipper handle and I don't have to carry this crap around with me um, 550 cord is certainly useful, but it is not the end all be all. I mean, we're not going taking this pack to go survive in the woods. So, uh, it's not something that I, uh, am, am going to go crazy about doing. So, um, yes, keep 550 cord in there, but you guys don't carry a whole roll of it. A, a little bit goes a long way with that stuff. Now, last thing in here, we have our compartment. Uh, this has all my toiletries in there because I'm not a dirty bird. So I have, you know, toothpaste, toothbrush. I do have, you know, granola bars, stuff like that. So I, so I have those options. Um, the uh, hand sanitizers, that sort of thing. This has, you know, some, some little aspirins and, and stuff like that. This is kind of my, I call it a toiletry kit in here, but it's really just that, that hygiene kit takes care of those minor issues that you run across. Again, it's not good. It's not, this is supposed to make my daily life more convenient. So if I get a migraine out, I've got some medicine for it or whatever it is. Uh, up here in the front, we do have a, uh, this is a special pocket that they built in just for sunglasses. I don't generally keep my sunglasses in there because I always have them clipped on me. Uh, I do keep a, uh, a face mask in there. Uh, I've done this as a habit, mostly since leaving the military. I've always kept a face mask in my, uh, in my bag uh, because when I was in the military, I was on a lot of vehicles and military vehicles, you have to wear a face mask on because uh, you're exposed where you're driving, especially like in Texas and desert environments where you have a lot of moon dust. Uh, you have to wear a face mask to uh, protect yourself so, uh, and, and keep that crap out of your lungs. So I keep that. Um, I always keep that in here. It's probably one of the things that I should ditch, but it takes the place of a bandana in this case. And so uh, I use it for that sense. 
it, it's nice to have a rag. It's nice to have it for different purposes. So even though I don't actually use it as a face mask, I find using it, being able to use it as a rag or something like that uh, is certainly beneficial. And so it just happens to uh, be one of those old habits left over from the military. And it has definitely earned its weight into my pack. Now, one thing I definitely keep in my bag because I don't smoke anymore. I quit smoking about six years ago. Uh, I keep a lighter in my bag. I used to keep one in my pocket. Now I keep one in my bag because I don't use it very often. Uh, around the lighter, you can see I have some medical tape. Uh, you can use duct tape, whatever you want. I used to use medical tape because this used to be in a medical kit. Uh, but keeping a lighter on you uh, with a little bit of tape wrapped around the handle, uh, certainly a good little trick. Duct tape, electrical tape, uh, athletic tape, any of the above, uh, they're pretty useful. Duct tape is probably the better one to use, but certainly athletic tape is, is a, uh, a worthwhile venture. Now, besides that in here, there'll be a water bottle. So this aluminum water bottle, uh, you can see this one has seen some better days, but uh, these aluminum water bottles, I'm a fan of. I guess you have the option of being able to boil water if you ever had to. Um, I don't see that as a very likely outcome, but it doesn't hurt me anything to carry an aluminum water bottle. And I'm gonna carry a water bottle anyways, because I wanna be able to have water. So uh, I might as well make it aluminum. And this thing keeps water really cold. Okay, so opening up our pack, make this a little bit easier for y'all to see. So in here, this is uh, kind of your admin stuff, right? So um, I carry a few company checkbooks. I have a, uh, a notepad in here. Uh, that notepad has kind of my important information that I need. Uh, and this oops, zipper pocket here, we have spare batteries, which I can't get to because this is an awkward angle, and a um, USB drive. So I keep a spare USB drive in here. This, again, guys, is one of those business things. This is not one with like a bunch of sensitive documents on it. I know a lot of people are a big fan of that. I uh, have a reason for not doing that. It's mostly for cybersecurity stuff, but um, you can encrypt them. If you're going to do that, you definitely want to have them encrypted uh, if you're going to keep a bunch of documents and things on a USB drive. Uh, but I just keep this one in here. This is for like transferring PowerPoint to somebody else's computer. Does not need to be encrypted and is not sensitive. Okay, so like I said, guys, I do uh, lots of business stuff. So I have, you know, obviously my computer. I have cables in here for connecting this to uh, presentation boards, that sort of thing. Um, we have, let's see in here, have some spare change. So this is kind of an old habit back from, uh, you know, dealing with pay phones and stuff to always have quarters and change on you. I don't know why I still keep quarters and change and stuff like that in my bag, but I always just, whenever I get a, a handful of change, I have a tendency of throwing them in there. Uh, I guess at the end of the day, it's not really a payphone thing so much. It is a, uh, a vending machine thing. Uh, this, again, guys, if you get like migraines or something like that, these little pill canisters are handy, um, and uh, or certainly if you have prescription medicine. Here's a charger. This is specifically for my Streamlight Wedge, but it's the same charger that works for my iPad. Uh, it's a USB, USB-C, so... Um, yeah, I think that's USB-C, right? Somebody tell me. I believe that's a USB-C is what they call that. But um, anyways, I keep a, sure, uh, or a Streamlight wedge in my back pocket and uh, probably actually going to pick up another one to keep in this bag just to have it here. Um, I do keep in this battery bag, I have a little cheap flashlight. These are, there's these little $6 ones that are, I think they're down in the description actually, you can order from Amazon. They work really well, guys, they're, they're kind of like a disposable flashlight. They're not really disposable, um, but they're so cheap that, you know, if you lose them or your TSA takes them or whatever, it's not a big deal. I keep one of those in here. They're reasonably bright. They allow me, they're kind of a pin light. They allow me to, you know, if I need to, to read a document or something like that, and for whatever reason, I don't have my regular flashlight again, go to the gym, or if, again, if I just want to change a tire, that gives me enough light to be able to do that. It's not something I'm clearing houses with, uh, but certainly is a uh, is a viable option for a utility purpose. So uh, let's see. I think that's about it here. The main pocket, I do have a computer charger. And then obviously, like I said, I like to go to the gym. I like to go for runs. And so I have my headsets there. Um, by the way, these are those ones that they go outside your ears and they like vibrate the, the eardrum, the, the bones and everything. They work really, really well. I'm a big fan of those. But so if you're, if you're a runner like me and you want to get some, check those out. 
Now, I have a plethora of zebra pins, right? So these go without saying. These are the, the same pins that uh, we use for like self-defense, right? Because they basically work like a coupeton, even though I keep a coupeton on my keychain. Um, these are uh, very similar, and these will pass through TSA uh, and go into any country. So, um, or any country that I'm aware of anyways. I'm not aware of any country that bans pins. Um, could happen, I guess. So, uh, but I always have a number of pins on me. I like zebra pins because I like the, uh, the, the defensive aspect of them. And then just because it makes sense, always keep a Sharpie in my bag. Um, I don't keep highlighters and stuff like that. I don't find a lot of need for them. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's that. Now, the last thing that I do keep in here is not in this pocket. Oh, it's in this. There's a hidden pocket on here somewhere. I'm trying to remember now where it was at. <laughs> It's uh, right there. Here we go. Okay. So there's a hidden pocket in this bag. And uh, what I keep in here is a uh, waterproof document case. Uh, and inside this waterproof document case, this is a uh, host of documents that I use uh, on a daily basis. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what's in here, uh, but these are documents that I find myself using a lot. I keep a spare copy of them in here. I keep a spare copy in, you know, a family member's safe. I keep a spare, just in case there's a house fire or something like that. Uh, but that way, if for whatever reason, uh, I was having to head out in the middle of the night and, uh, you know, like I said, fire or something like that, um, this is this is certainly one of the bags that I would be grabbing because it has my computer and everything like that in there. Uh, and it would have some backup documents and stuff like that in here. One really good idea that I've always liked is throwing if you get like old driver's license if the state doesn't revoke or when they when they give you a new driver's license some states used to not take your driver's license um, and if they will allow you to keep the old one even if it's voided that's a great thing to throw in here so you have some spare identification in the event that you run into an issue uh, like I said house fire being probably the most likely that you'd lose all your documents so um, okay guys that's uh, that's about it uh, this uh, this Victos bag it has been a uh, here the chickens has been uh, one of my more more uh, favorite ones because it is a very lightweight bag. It seems to be fairly well organized and holds everything that I need it to hold. I realize I don't have a fixed blade knife in here. I'm missing a lot of stuff that survivalists seem to think I have. I don't have water purification ability in here. Um, probably will not add a life straw or anything like that. At, 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 a, at a point in time where you need to look at that stuff. Um, you know that, that I guess we're not we're not we're not talking about me uh, bolting from my vehicle to get home. So um, I always have water in my car, so it's very easy for me to take my computer out, leave it in my car, and replace that with you know eight bottles bottles of water. I keep a case of water in every vehicle that we have, so uh, it's just not something I'm terribly worried about. Take that for what it's worth, guys. I appreciate y'all watching. I just really want to do this video and uh, give you my take on a bolt bag. So we'll talk to y'all later. Make sure and like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Thanks again for watching.